Good afternoon. We'd like to say welcome to everyone that has joined us today for our Lunch and Learn series. As much as we can talk about how excited we are to bring what we feel to be a great workshop, it is only as great as the content that you guys find beneficial to you all. So we always want to be mindful of your time. Thank you for sharing your lunch with us. If you haven't had an opportunity yet, please drop your name um, and the organization that you represent in the chat. Also, if you will provide to us, what do you hope to gain from this workshop today? So obviously there was something that was a trigger whenever you saw the flyer or heard about the workshop. So if you will just place those comments in the chat for us, please. I am Pam Green. I am the director with the Richmond County Office of Small Business Opportunity. Um, we have a team, um, I always say the small but mighty. We're actually growing our team. So we're excited to be bringing on a couple of additional folks a little bit later on um, this year. But today we have Lusasha Berlon, who is our business development and um, outreach coordinator. We have Margaret Jones, who is our certification and compliance specialist who's with us. And I just wanna share very briefly, the mission of this office is pretty much just to advocate for county contracts. We are a race and gender neutral tool that is used by the county in its procurement efforts. But we are here to advocate for small businesses, to look for ways that we can connect you to resources, opportunities, access to capital. We wanna make sure that you are qualified to do the work and make the necessary connections wherever we can that can help you in your need to compete, not with just with county contracts, but I like to say go globally. So we take, a, we take into consideration our partnerships with the city, with the state, um, with the federal government very seriously. So we like to provide a holistic approach to you all in ways to be able to offer opportunities um, to you. So I won't belabor the point. I'm gonna turn this over to LaSasha. We will share some additional stuff with you at the end of our workshop series, but we would really wanna make sure that we're mindful of time that you're able to get the meat that you came for. LaSasha. Thank you, Pam. As Pam mentioned, my name is LaSasha Berlin. I'm the Business Development Outreach Coordinator for OSBO. Uh, one of the things that I would like to highlight when it comes to our offices right now, we're actively setting appointments for small businesses. So if you are on this call today, if you're on our Lunch and Learn series and you are interested in learning more about our office, I will provide some additional information at the end of this um, event. So that way you can learn how to get connected with us. Also, um, when it comes to projects and solicitations, if you are currently a SLBE with our program, please be sure to make sure you check your emails for notifications and updates that are coming out of the office. Um, and then one last thing before I turn it over to Ms. Margaret Jones is that we do have some upcoming events this year. Uh, one that will be held on um, July, it will be held in the month of July, and it will be surrounding intentional networking. Also, we want you to mark your calendars for a save the date for our annual event called Engage Richland, and that will be held on September, September 18th. So please be sure to mark your calendar for that, and I will go over that again at the end of the event. And now I will turn it over to Ms. Margaret Jones, our Certification and Compliance Specialist. Good morning. Um, I would like to introduce Mr. Armando Morales. Prior to uh, size up, Armando has a total of five years experience working in the city government where he worked in the, both community and economic development. Most recently, he worked for the city of Lockhart, Texas, successfully recruiting targeted industries. Most recently, he worked uh, with the Lockhart Development and implementing programs to help recruit members to the United People Global, a global and nonprofit organization helping increase membership by 30%. And as a member associate planner and Ed Specialist, uh, he led efforts to downtown re revitalization and other economic development efforts for the city of La Crosse. As a project manager for long-range strategic plans, 
incentive programs, and various community relations projects. He is an alumnus of New Mexico State University, where he played Division I tennis and received his master's in applied geography. He now calls El Paso, Texas home. Mr. Armando Morales. Thank you, Margaret, for the warm welcome, and, and thank you, everyone else. Uh, Osasha, Pamela, um, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to um, show Richland County the uh, size up and what it can offer and how it, how it can help their uh, everybody's small business and entrepreneurial uh, endeavors. So I guess I will go ahead and uh, jump into the, the presentation. So I guess if I mean, by now, I'm sure everybody knows if they're they're in the right place or not. But just in case, I will be giving a, a demonstration and an overview of Size Up and how it can help your small business and, and uh, entrepreneurial endeavor. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. You should be seeing my PowerPoint now. Okay, I've got a few a few head nods. So I guess before I jump into the overview of Size Up, um, I I do want to mention that there will be a Q and A session uh, towards the end. Uh, normally when we do this, or well sometimes when we do this, I have a colleague who is uh, our we'll call him air traffic controller and answering the chat uh, any questions in the chat. But since it's just me today. Um, if you could ask your questions in the chat uh, as we go along, that way uh, you don't forget your question, and we can always and we can get to them at the very end. Um, so, without further ado, we are here to show you size up the South Carolina tool. Um, right here on the screen, you've got two QR codes and two links. So, on the left over here, uh, it will take you directly to the size up tool. Uh, so you can start doing your own analytics right away. And if you would like to follow along with the demonstration today and do your own examples, um, it, it usually is much more insightful and much more helpful. And you typically have uh, more insightful questions once you're able to, to follow along. So I do encourage you to go uh, and follow along by going to the website as well. And then on the right, the QR code over here, sizeup.info slash open house. Um, we know a lot of times during these demonstrations, um, you know, uh, while the, while the demonstrator is there, you're like, oh, I got it. I understand it. And then later when you go by yourself, you're like, hmm, wait, what about that? What about that? What about that? Well, right here, you have an opportunity to be able to sign up for additional uh, sessions with us where, uh, me and my colleagues will be there and we'll be able to essentially give you guys a one-on-one -on -one uh, bring your, your questions and we'll be happy to answer your specific use case, uh, whatever your specific industry is and how to perform that analysis. So uh, we don't want to leave you guys high and dry. We want to help you all succeed. So please uh, go ahead and go to those links, bookmark them and save them for later so that uh, you can do the analysis on your small business. Okay, so size up. Um, we are very invested in small businesses and entrepreneurs, so we like to keep track of the trends. So what you see here is the business formations or the business starts in the United States um, uh, year over year. So as you can see, it's been steadily growing. And then, of course, we have this dip right here. Uh, many of you will remember it's the uh, that's the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we had a bit of a dip here, and we were very worried that that was going to be the trend. Uh, however, it fantastically shot up in the opposite direction. Uh, eventually, it did come down. However, even when it did come down, the lowest, uh, its low was uh, higher than any of the previous highs before it, and it maintained that same trend. Now, of course, the U.S. is a big country, so we look at uh, the South, and we still see the same trend. And then if we look even even closer, we look at South Carolina and we still see that same trend. So it is a positive time uh, to be a small business. 
However, even, even though there is a lot more business starts in the US, we do still wanna be wary of the business failure rate. Now, that's one of the reasons why um, the Department of Commerce exists, the uh, Richland County Opportunity Office of Small Business Opportunity exists because of things like this. The small the business failure rate uh, within the first five years of small business, as you can see, unfortunately, is close to about 50 percent. Now, uh, if we break that number down, part of the reason why is due to uh, a natural death is what we'll 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 call it. Um, that's when the market shifts. Um, you know, the when fax fax machines used to be a thing, and then everybody started moving on to emails. Uh, rental DVDs, you know, Blockbuster, uh, very famously, the Blockbuster, where you go and rent the DVDs were a thing. Now everything's moved on to streaming services. So uh, natural shifts in the market. Not a lot that we can do for, for that at the moment. However, if we look at the other piece of the pie over here, about two thirds of small businesses are failing due to a lack of preparation. Now, this comes in in many forms, and most of it is a lack of preparation as far as uh, doing the research and knowing what is out there. So that's where size up becomes very powerful. We provide the objective lens of data so that you can optimize your decision making. So let's talk a little bit more about size up. Uh, and that's kind of why, uh, based on what I explained, is why we do an online business intelligence tool. Uh, we know that not small businesses don't have the same access to uh, the same data as big businesses do. You know, not everybody can be the Amazons and the Walmarts of the world where they can hire the Deloitte's and McKinsey's to do that $100,000 analysis. So what SizeUp does is we collate hundreds of different data sources and we provide it in an easy to use tool known as SizeUp so that you can do your own analyses and be able to optimize your decision making. We also know that uh, the hours of small businesses vary quite wildly. Um, small businesses, or the owners of small businesses have to work incredibly hard, oftentimes 60 to 80 hours a week uh, to be able to uh, maintain their small business. So we provide this tool uh, at all times of the day, 24 seven, it's online. Uh, and we'll go ahead and go back to that website that, that was previously on the previous slide, sizeup.info slash SC. And we've made it simple to use. Uh, we know that not uh, most small businesses don't know their NICs or SIC codes. Uh, so we speak the same language as small businesses do. And we'll kind of go in through some examples of that. And then in addition to that, we know um, everybody has a different level of tech savviness. So we've created a report generator so that you can um, print this out, you can kind of see it on paper and be able to take this offline as well. So uh, going through a little bit of the ways that you can search. So going back to the simple to use, if we wanna look at retail, we can look as broadly when we type in the search, instead of having to do you know, next code number 700,000, 400 and whatever it is, uh, we can simply type in restaurants and we can start to compare the restaurant industry. Or we can sometimes go even more specific and go into Italian restaurants or even more specific in pizza. One more quick example, we can also look at things like uh, transportation, right? So we can look as broadly as automotive, we can look a little bit more specific in vehicle maintenance, and then we can look a little bit more specific in motor repair. Now, depending on the data that is available, we can see it at various different scales. So if the data is available at the block group level, we try and provide it at that block group level and every other scale uh, beyond that so that you can also compare the various different scales as well. Uh, especially when you're trying to compare business, you do want to be able to look at various scales. It is very helpful. Now, an overview of the different analyses that are uh, provided in the tool. Uh, we have three very important uh, analyses. We have the business ranking or the benchmarking analyses. Here, you're able to compare various different types of benchmarks. So things like average annual revenue, the number of employees in a given industry, 
uh, what's the average salary of uh, employee in a given industry, uh, the number of businesses that have started in a given year. So you can compare your business to like industries in your geography and be able to compare um, where, where it is that everybody is um, in their business journey. The comp competition analyses. So we like to think of this as your business's ecosystem looking at who are your competitors? Are they big box stores? Are they mom and pop shops? Are there clusters of them? Um, being able to discover potential new business customers. Uh, you know, everybody needs to have, have customers, so uh, we help you look out for those. And then of course, potential new suppliers. Uh, we Everybody's gotta get their supplies from somewhere, so we help you identify where other suppliers potentially are, be able to find out what their, their price points are, uh, their geography, uh, what their offerings are. And then last, but certainly not least, uh, the advertising analyses. So you'll be able to maximize where you spend your marketing and advertising dollars based on different sorts and filters so that you can um, have more bang for your buck. So that was it for the presentation part of it. I hope that was a, a helpful overview of Size Up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go and share my browser and we'll go ahead and take you through this Size Up journey. And then of course we practice this, but <laughs> now, now that we're in it, my <laughs> browser is hard to find, but it looks like I am sharing my browser now. So uh, right now we have a blank browser and there's multiple ways to find the size up tool. You can simply Google or type into your browser, size up South Carolina. And then as you can see, it pops up right here. Uh, it's gonna be on the South Carolina Commerce uh, website. So we can go ahead and click on that here. And with this, you don't need to, oh. and then as we scroll down, we can see size up South Carolina tool we can go ahead and simply uh, click on use this tool and you don't need to download anything. You can simply start uh, using it right away. Or we can go to the website that was given, sizeup.info slash SC, and that will also take you directly to the site as well. Uh, so there's multiple ways to find this and be able to start uh, doing your own analyses here. So a couple of things before I get started, if there are any Spanish speakers or anyone that prefers uh, doing their analyses in Spanish, uh, I'm happy to announce that we do have that available. It is not Google translated. It is, um, we professionally got this translated. So if you click here, everything will be understood in context, the way it was uh, meant to be understood and the way it is uh, designed in English. So, now, all you need to know to get started are two things, what industry you're looking to do your analyses in and what location you're looking to do your analyses in. So let's say that I am looking, um, I, I feel like there might be a little bit of a food desert. I wanna do a little bit of uh, better food offerings in my area. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to type in something like grocery store. So we start to type that in and we get the different categories that are here and we can start to, we can click on that and then we can look or enter our location. So let me go ahead and type in Columbia. And uh, I do want to mention that you can, with this tool, you can search any town uh, within the state of South Carolina. So let's go ahead and go to Columbia and then we click on next. And then here we see all the, an analysis chooser. So in the presentation earlier, I kind of went on an overview of that. Here, you can go directly into any of these analyses that best speak to you, that best um, are what fits the analysis that you're trying to do to help enhance your business. Uh, today, we're gonna go ahead and go through all of those. So right here is the uh, measuring your business performance or the benchmarking analyses. So we'll go ahead and go through that one first. Let's see, uh, it's asking me to sign in really quick. Uh, I don't need to do that right now. We can always continue as a guest. 
oops, little quick survey. We'll go ahead and skip that one uh, here. But if if you do run into that, please do that that survey. It's very beneficial. Um, it's very beneficial, and it helps us uh, better serve you. Okay, so into the benchmarking analyses. Here we have various types of benchmarks that you can look at. Um, the first one being the average annual revenue. So we are in grocery stores and we are looking at Columbia. So, uh, Lasasha, can I ask you to come off mute for just a second? Uh, I got a, a quick question for you. Of course. What do you think, uh, and, and again, I am putting you on the spot here. So what do you think the average annual revenue of a grocery store in Columbia is? And this is not profit. This is average annual revenue. Mm, that's a hard one. I, I would say, are you talking about like a, a big chain or? So we have entered grocery stores general. So it's going to be a combination of the big stores and the, the small neighborhood ones as well. Um, if I had to guess, <laughs> if I had to guess, it has to be in the middle. I mean, people buy groceries, so I would probably say mm -hmm. 2.5 million. 2.5. Okay, perfect. So, and, and I totally did that on purpose. I put you on the spot because you right now are in the same position as most small business and entrepreneurs starting their, their small business journey. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody tells you, hey, you make a great lasagna, you should open up a shop, or uh, I love your 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 bread, your cookies, your your whatever the, the service or product is. And eventually you get it in your head, you know what? Yeah, I could do this, I could open it up. But you're not exactly sure what, what everybody else is making, what the salary ranges are, the amount of employees, and that's where Size Up becomes so powerful. We illuminate you to that, uh, information here. So right now we're thinking we're going to be making 2.5 mm -hmm. as a grocery store. And as we can see here, uh, if we, if we had our site set on 2.5, now we can go ahead and kind of reel it back and say, oh, you know what? Uh, maybe if I'm, if, uh, what's typical actually within the city is closer to 1.5, even in the U S it's not quite two on average. Then I should adjust my uh, adjust my sites and everything. So if we thought, oh, you know, I can I can afford to uh, pay this amount, have this amount of employees, um, we might want to start to to rethink that. And inversely, it's the same thing. If we thought we were going to make uh, five hundred thousand, you might want to set your sites even higher. Now we can see these at different scales, and that's very helpful. Now what I love about this is. We also have a heat map over here, which tells even more of the story. So we've got the average here, sure. But over here, we can see this by zip code. So not all areas are created equal. There are areas where they're making slightly less. So in the 600 to 1.1 million range, and then areas in the darker colors over here that are making the 2 to 2.6. So even our 2.6 might still be in, um, in a good range. That, that might actually work, but now it depends on location. So, um, and one, one of the things I do want to point out is uh, throughout the tool, all of our maps are, are interactive. So here we can move around uh, so we can see different areas. We can also zoom in. We can go ahead and zoom out. And as you can see, the legend will, will adjust uh, as you move it. But we can also zoom out. Uh, and eventually we'll be getting information by county, so we can also compare neighboring counties as well. And then eventually, if we go scroll out far enough, we can do this by state. Now, it might not make sense to compare this particular benchmark uh, for every industry, but there are certain industries that it does apply to. So uh, let's think maybe one, maybe uh, uh, if you're in a town that is close to another state, um, or if you are a hotel or a motel and most of your customers are from out of town, out of state, um, you do want to be able to compare in that way. So depending on your use case, this is also very valuable. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the, the next benchmark over here. 
we're looking at year started. So here we can go ahead and see the trends of how many businesses in a given industry have opened up in a given year. Um, so we'll go ahead and put 2012. And here we have it at the various different scales. And if you kind of hover over, you can see how many grocery stores have opened up in a given scale in a given year. Now, if we we can obviously say that the, the US is overshadowing everything, so we can go ahead and click that off. And then we can see it from the state, uh, county, and city point of view. Now, what's great about this is it will give you a trend. So typically, if the trend is going in a generally positive direction, that is typically signs of a healthy industry. Now, if it were going in the opposite direction, we might be in an industry like uh, rental DVDs or the, the fax machine and those type of industries. So uh, that, that'll give you an idea of the, the health of the, the industry and about going into it, and especially in the area. Okay, so moving on, the next benchmark over here, actually the next two benchmarks that I wanna talk about, salary and employees. Now these ones are very important for small businesses to get uh, accurate, especially from the beginning. Uh, because the amount of employees you have, well, salary of employees are some of the highest overhead costs of small businesses. So if you hire too many employees to start with, um, you're not getting as much productivity and you're paying high overhead costs. Now, inversely, if you hire too few employees, you're not able to service your clientele sufficiently enough and you could also be uh, losing money as well. So, Again, size up, illuminating uh, you to that, that objective lens of data. So for a grocery store, let's go ahead and say um, about 25,000. We're taking into consideration this is a combination of all of those uh, occupations that work in the industry. So cashiers, stockers, uh, facility managers, managers, things like that. So uh, we can see how it looks by, by county here. Uh, and then we can now kind of make that, that adjustment there. Now, in addition to that, we can also see about how many number of full-time equivalent employees that are working in a grocery store. Now, grocery stores are typically pretty big, so I'm gonna go ahead and guess maybe about 20. Okay, so it looks like it's closer to 15 on average, and that's pretty consistent throughout all of the scales, the city, county, metro, state, and the nation. Now, of course, looking at the heat map, it does vary by area. There are some areas where it is 22 to 25, and there are some where the grocery stores are much smaller and there's about six to 11. Now, please keep in mind, this is full-time equivalent. So there may very well be maybe 40, but you know half of those are quarter or part-time employees, which eventually will make up to uh, a full-time equivalent employee. Okay. So moving on to the next one, uh, cost effectiveness. So here we have the uh, uh, cost effectiveness. Uh, this was based on all of the previous input, well, not all of the previous inputs, but some of the previous inputs that we just did. So the average annual revenue, the amount of employees that we have and how much we are paying them. So this right here, this average that we have, um, uh, as we can see, we're doing about average over here, um, is a direct reflection of the inputs that we just entered. So if we were to have put, let's say that our particular business has 10 employees, we can see that this cost effectiveness over here will start to go up. The reason being for that is we are making much more than the average grocery store. We are, and now in this case, where we have a lot less employees and we're paying them slightly less. So it's uh, adjusting that cost effectiveness based on the rest of your competition and what the numbers are. Uh, moving on to the next one, revenue per capita. Here you can see the business or the data sliced in a couple of different ways. So uh, here you can see revenue per capita or the quality of the dollars spent uh, in the area. And then also the other heat map we have here is total revenue by zip code. This is different from the very first uh, benchmark that we saw because that is the average annual revenue. So here you can see um, in, a, in the zip codes um, where the summation of all of the grocery stores are. So you can kind of see uh, where 
you know, there's, it, it kind of shows you a, um, a concentration or, and or quality of grocery stores in a given zip code here. That can kind of help you make a determination on geography if you're looking to open a business or looking to uh, open up a second location. Uh, it can answer quite a few different questions. Okay, now, last but not least, we have these last three benchmarks over here, local retention. So the amount, the amount of percentage of workers that you're able typically to retain in a given industry. And it looks like it's about 82%. So of those 25 employees that were on the higher range, if we are losing, uh, guess what, about four or five, then it looks like we would still be fitting in this, this range here. So if we lost them fairly quickly, we would, we would kind of, uh, as a manager, maybe we would kind of worry and be like, oh, uh, I'm losing quite a bit of employees, what's going on? Uh, and we can look over here and say, oh, that is the industry standard. Um, your practices are still doing just fine. This is what's typical in the industry. Now, of course, inversely, if we see that we're losing 10 and it's not typical, we might want to adjust our, our practices. Or if we are only losing one or two and we're in that 95% range, we can kind of pat ourselves on the back and say, hey, we're doing a good job. We are above the industry standards. And then these last two um, benchmarks over here, healthcare costs and workers comp, these have been opaque to small businesses in the past, and now they are illuminated uh, with size up here. Excuse me. Now that we've done all of those inputs, uh, we can click this summary view button here. Well, you can do that even without putting the inputs, but um, it's most beneficial when you've already done the inputs you can see a collapsed view or a health dashboard of all of the inputs that you've done. So you can kind of see everything at a glance view um, and get an idea of an overall health. Now, I did talk about being able to generate PDF reports. So uh, now that we've entered all of these, we can click this PDF button and this PDF button will appear on all of the analyses so that you can have that for a later time. And it will generate a report of all of the inputs that we, we just did, along with the associated heat maps. So you can have that for later. You can save that, um, have a snapshot. You can share it with a coworker, a colleague. Um, you can put it as part of a business plan, uh, be able to show that you understand the industry and the geography that you are working in. Okay, so that was the benchmarking analyses, being able to compare yourself to uh, the like industry in your geography. Now, a couple of things I wanna point out before I move on to the next analyses is uh, if you ever want to change your industry, you can do so either by going home or clicking right here where the industry is highlighted. And you can also move around in geography as well within the state. So if we wanted to do, let's say adjacent industries, or if we wanted to help um, a friend with their analyses on their small business, we can always change this up. Let's say we're going to real estate or something like that. Um, we can go ahead and do that. And all of the analyses will adjust based on that particular industry. Same thing if you wanted to do something generalized and then go a little bit more specific, you can look at things like restaurants and then it will adjust there. And then you can go even, even more um, um, specific. So uh, what did we say last time? Like Italian restaurants. And then it will start to give you that information at the various scales and then at the heat map as well. And then we can also do, let's say, even pizza. In some cases, we can get that specific as well. Okay. Um, and then the last thing that I want to point out before I move on to the next analyses is uh, any whichever analysis is active at the time will have this info bubble right here. You can click on that. And it will give you a one minute or less video that walks you through this analysis and explain uh, what it does. So if you ever get lost or unsure, uh, it is a brief overview and you can always um, kind of get your bearings. 
Okay. So I see that there are some questions in the chat. Um, I am going to go ahead and briefly take a look at those, see if there are any that are uh, relevant. Uh, oh, I think that was a question about an event. Oh, okay. Oh, I, don't. I, don't. I, I will help. I will help you with the chat because the question is, but we need to change the revenue amount from 2.5 million. Okay. So, yeah, I remember when we were d discussing that. So, um, you can play around with this. It's, it's one of those things where you can, um, it's going from the perspective of your business. So you enter uh, a number that you either project or that that uh, you've had in the past, um, and you can always change it. Uh, you can always play with the data. So we could actually do 1.5. Um, so this data is updated periodically. Um, a lot of this in this particular analysis are updated every three months, and some cases every six months. I think the salary information I'm not sure if that's six or annually, um, but uh, you'll want to to come back periodically and do this analysis. And at that point, you might enter a different input. So you don't necessarily have to put 2.5 million. It depends on the industry. And, and frankly, um, one trick that I typically don't share, but you don't even have to enter a, a value if you want to see it. If you're uncomfortable entering the value, but you want to see the information, you can always uh, just click that that down arrow and uh, you can get that information there. Armando, can I ask something of you? Because I'm taking yes. a look of um, the chat. So we have a couple of folks that are in the commercial cleaning industry mm -hmm. and then someone in the promotional um, arena. Is it possible just to kind of do a quick look at maybe those two industries just for who's on the who's on the call sure absolutely so uh if i could request just so that we get through all of the analyses that we do that for the next analyses that's fine all righty so you said commercial cleaning and what was the other one promotionals okay promotional, promotional items yes okay so let's go ahead and start with the uh, commercial cleaning. So um, right here, I have clicked on the competition analyses. So this is, so let's go ahead and do cleaning services. Mm -mm -mm. House cleaning and maintenance service, let's see. So another thing, actually perfect timing, I uh, wanna point out is, as you start to type in something, it will bring you a drop down. So if you're unsure of the industry that you're looking in, you can also kind of uh, scroll down and see which one uh, best applies to you. So we've got house cleaning, maintenance services, industrial cleaning, uh, laundry cleaning, and uh, quite a few other ones. Let's see, dry cleaning stores, I'm assuming, we passed on uh, carpet and upholstery, uh, dry cleaning stores, equipment cleaning services. I'm assuming that might be the one that we're looking for, Pamela. We would probably be looking more at maybe building cleaning building. and maintenance. I think I saw that earlier. Okay. Uh, buildings. There we go. Building cleaning and maintenance services. Perfect. I guess I did scroll right past that. <laughs> so we are in the competition analyses, looking at your business's ecosystem. So there are three very important tabs in this in this uh, analysis here. You've got your competition, where you're able to assess who you're competing with. You know, is it mom bo uh, big box stores, mom pop shops? Are there clusters of them? We also have this customers tab here being able to prospect potential new business customers. And then we have uh, suppliers, being able to discover uh, other suppliers where we can get our supplies from, compare price points uh, and location of other suppliers. So let's go ahead and go back to the competitors. And this one by default lists other um, building and cleaning maintenance services that are, that are here. Now, if you are competing with more than just that, we can always click here 
on this industries tab and we can add even uh, even more industries. So let's say, let's start to type in cleaning. Um, we've already got building and maintenance services. Let's go ahead and put um, carpet and upholstery cleaning. Let's say in addition to building and cleaning, we also specifically wanna call out carpet and upholstery cleaning so that we can get, um, I know when I move apartments, sometimes I have to, to hire the carpet cleaners and things like that. So I'll also add that there. Um, Let's go ahead and also do maintenance. Uh, let's see, building cleaning maintenance services. See if anything else pops up that might be relevant. Gutter and drought, house cleaning maintenance services. Okay, so now we're starting to build up a competitors list. Now, now we can see not only who they are, but we can also see where they are. So, um, as I mentioned before, all of our maps are interactive, so we can move around, uh, we can click on these, and we can click on these in the map or even over here as well. So if we click on that, it'll pop up an info card so we can get information about these particular businesses. Um, so we can get the, the address, we can get the uh, phone number, uh, and, and then sometimes if they have an online presence, we can even get the uh, their online presence so that we can follow that. We can see what their their services, their price points, uh, the different products that they're they're selling, and we can be able to compare and see what we're competing against and maybe what we need to um, start adding or what we need to do to set ourselves apart as a competitor in a given industry. Um, now, let's see. Uh, if we move on to the next tab, the customers tab, uh, being able to prospect potential new customers, uh, let's see, as a building cleaning and maintenance services. Uh, and please keep in mind, this is a business to business um, search. So let's say office. I know I'm, I imagine you want to look at different office uh, buildings and things like that. Or you know what? Let's see. Office and store fixtures, mm, that might not make sense. Office buildings and office parks, that might make more sense. Um, let's see, what else for building and cleaning services? Uh, government offices typically need that. So attorney's offices typically need that. Let's see, oh, we've got quite a bit of government, uh, see government executive offices. Um, and we can add an unlimited amount of different industries here to continue to build up our prospective customers list. So let's go ahead and add one more attorneys. Um, and then just like the previous tab, we can go ahead and um, look at our different, in this case, potential or prospective customers. Uh, we can get that info card we can get their phone number, and then we can go ahead and be able to um, follow up with them and see if we can convert them into a potential client. Now that we found where our potential customers are, we can also overlay the consumer spending to see where people are already uh, spending their hard earned dollars. So um, as you can see, there is a lot of different categories to search through. Um, let's see which one would make sense. Uh, household furnishing and equipment, maybe. Uh, household operations, uh, I think so. So sometimes it might take a little bit of exploration. We go there and it looks like that might not actually be what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and start over there. Uh, let's see if we can go ahead and start to type in maintenance and if that's a little bit more helpful. And it looks like it's under shelter, uh, repairs and maintenance. I think that might be more, more helpful here. That's rental costs, maybe not. Uh, miscellaneous own dwelling expenses, repairs, and maintenance. So let's go ahead and go with that. So now we can see where consumers are already spending their money by household. Uh, and we can see this at the block group level. Uh, and the legend right here will display about how much is being spent um, in, a, in a given range in a block group area. And we can always zoom out to get another uh, a higher picture. Uh, and then we can zoom out so we can get it by zip code, or we can continue to stay a little bit closer and see that by block group, move around and see where it varies 
by geography. Okay, and then let's go ahead and for now, I'm gonna go ahead and take this heat map off so that we can declutter the map a little bit. Now, last but certainly not least, we have the suppliers tab uh, where we're able to search for um, different uh, suppliers. So for cleaning and maintenance services, see, I'm not sure who would be, where I would get my supplies from, uh, but I'll go ahead and start to type in clean and let's see, cleaning compounds wholesale. I'm gonna take a, a guess and say that that's what we're going for. Now, if you're following along with me uh, or if you're following along on your own computer, you can start to add these on your own. So click the, these industries right here. Um, unfortunately, you know, I can't be an expert in every industry. Uh, so we go ahead and type what we know. Let's see, clean uh, carpeting, cleaning services. Uh, I imagine you want to do cleaning products of some kind, uh, dry cleaning stores. That could be equipment cleaning services. Uh, let's see. House uh, cleaning repair services. And I guess this is a perfect example. Sometimes it will take a little bit of time to search through and do some of this analysis, but uh, eventually we will get to, we will find it. Uh, let's see, cleaning uh, products. And let's see if that type comes up. Uh, specialty polishing sanitation preparations. Polishing sanitation preparations. Let's see, products, uh, maintenance. Um, okay, unfortunately, that's not popping up right now. I wish I had a little bit more um, background in this. However, I don't at the moment. So we're gonna go ahead and go with what we have right now. And we do have a few things that have popped up. Uh, it looks like we might be a little bit further from Columbia, but uh, we can, uh, now we are at least illuminated to uh, these businesses. And in this case, like Mr. Appliance, you can go and you can follow that link and be able to see what they're providing and if those services or products make sense for, for your business to, to get those from. So uh, that was the competition analyses, being able to look at your business's ecosystem. And here we went through the um, uh, building or uh, cleaning and maintenance services. Um, and we were able to look at who our competitors were um, and where they land. Uh, and we were able to even add even more additional industries uh, that we felt that we might be competing with. We had our customers tab where we were able to add on multiple industries and build up a perspective customers list, and then suppliers, where we were able to type in those industries and then be able to see where there are potential or prospective new suppliers that we can get our uh, products and services from. Okay, so I uh, guess we can take a quick pause. And Pamela, were there any questions relevant to this particular analysis? So I don't see anything in the chat, um, okay. but thank you so much for, for adding this specific no problem. Yes. No problem. That's a, um, so something like this, actually it's, it's perfect. Um, something like this is what you can look forward to if you sign up for our, uh, open house hours. Um, and of course there's more interaction so because, um, whoever attends will be able to show video, uh, do audio and be able to walk us through their, their specific questions, give us more feedback, things like that. So it's a lot more interactive and much more helpful um, like as a as a one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, a little bit of a glimpse into what you'll be getting if you go into that. And then there will be uh, more of us. So my colleagues will be uh, joining as well. So more brains, a lot better, um, more useful information that you'll get out of it. So now that brings us to the final analyses, but certainly not the least, uh, and it is your advertising analyses. Now, if you could remind me, Pamela, the 
Uh, the other industry that we wanted to look at was which one? Promotionals. Promotional. Promotionals. Okay. So right now we're looking at advertising. So, so if we are a promotional or an advertising, I guess this is actually the perfect analysis for you. Um, so depending on where you want to advertise your services, this is where you would uh, select what industry you're looking to advertise in. So uh, let's see, for promotional services, I mean, you're promoting your, your promotional abilities. Uh, let's see. So maybe we would want to do something like um, tourists or events. Um, you're looking at the, in when we type it in here, you're looking at the industry in which you want to um, advertise in. So if I'm doing promotional stuff, maybe I want to advertise in the hotel space. I know a lot of times when you go to the hotels, they have a lot of flyers and things like that. Maybe you can promote your promotional business or Maybe that might not be the best way to go. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not in that that industry. Um, but let's go ahead and go with that for this particular example. So if we go ahead and do hotels and motels, now <clears throat> we are getting information uh, by zip code on this particular industry so that we can do our advertising in here. Um, so let's say, and we can do this on a couple of different sorts. So there's six different ways that you can arrange your uh, results. And depending on your specific use case, one might be more relevant than the other. So here we've got total annual revenue, revenue per capita, underserved markets, average revenue, total employees, and household income. So if we're doing promotional stuff, I imagine we might want to look at um, uh, this industry where they're making uh, more money on the higher end typically means more more traffic, uh, more revenue. So let's go ahead and keep it with uh, total annual revenue. Uh, or inversely, we could also go with household income in the area, looking at more of the demographic approach. But let's go ahead and look at the total annual revenue of this particular uh, industry. And right now we see that we've got about nine results. Uh, actually eight results, excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, we can explore each one of these by looking at the map. So we can see all of that associated information, the population, average re um, annual revenue in that zip code in that particular industry. Now, uh, we have eight results here. Um, this might be too few for some of our searches, or it might be too many for other searches. Either way, we can go over here and you can filter uh, up or down. So let's say we are looking, still looking at advertising our, our promotional business in the hotels and motel industry. Um, actually, you know what? That kind of makes more sense. Go to, to the hotels, advertise to them so that they can get their, all their promotional material from you. I think that that works <laughs> or I might be stretching it. I'm not sure. Uh, whoever uh, is doing it from the promotional uh, business will know this this aspect much better than I will. Uh, but for the purposes of this example, we can still continue. So you can either expand your search all the way nationwide, or you can go all the way down to as far as a mile, which probably won't res um, return very many results. Um, but let's say we are looking to promote out up into to 50 miles. Here we can see that we got about 51 results. Now, in addition to that, maybe we want to filter it down either by the industry performance uh, of this particular industry, or we can filter it down by the zip code's demographic characteristics. Um, when we started this, this uh, search, we did talk about filtering it by the industry performance. So maybe, excuse me, we want to make sure that a uh, zip code is making at least uh, 500,000 over there for it to, to be, to make it worth it, or uh, maybe a little bit higher. So let's go ahead and say at least 700, uh, 750,000. So we went from about 51 zip codes all the way to about 24. And now we can see that it is 
uh, sorted by total annual revenue, the ones that are the highest. So here we can see which ones best speak out to us and evaluate that way. Now we have our clear winners over here, right? But we also have more information that we can go with. So if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that while uh, the set the 29223 zip code uh, is making uh, a little bit less than the 29210 zip code, we can see that there is almost a 13,000 um, difference in population. So it is a potential to reach more uh, customers as well. So, um, well, and also we are looking at hotels and motels. So actually we've got, we've got time. I can show you one quick trick. Um, so right now we are set to hotels and motels. We've already seen where the total annual revenue is higher. So the 29210 uh, area. So, oops, excuse me. So it looks like a little bit Northwest of Columbia. If we go back to the competition module, since we do have hotels and motels um, highlighted, we can kind of go, oops. Apologies on that. So if we go back over there, I guess it had to, to reset a little bit. So we are in Columbia. If we kind of zoom out a little bit, uh, and then I think it was about here. Uh, that doesn't seem right. Uh, oh, of course we have other industries highlighted, so we take those off. We'll get back to the the hotels. Let's see. So apologies, I'm not as familiar with this this area. So it looks like about William Bryce Stadium. So we can go over there. Oh, I think it's actually uh, south of Columbia. Well. You'll, you'll know the, the geography a lot better than I will. So if you scroll out, uh, you can explore the area where uh, these hotels are. And now that you know that particular zip code has a higher average annual revenue, which was our key criteria, you can see which hotels are specifically there and you can target those directly. So I'm glad we had uh, more time in this demo so we can actually, I could actually uh, show you that that trick, which unfortunately in other demos I don't always have time for. So I'm grateful for that. So now going back to continuing the advertising analysis, uh, we've done that with the industry performance. Now, if we want to look at uh, the demographic um, performance in an area, we can also do that. So changing up the the industry and the approach. Let's say that I am um, an embroiderer um, and I want to advertise my, my services and get other businesses to do, do my services. And I found that typically the most beneficial um, uh, invoices that I've received are those from um, businesses that have a higher amount of employees. The reason being is higher amount of employees typically means that they're going to have uniforms and they're gonna have bigger orders of them. So if I were to look at something that typically has higher amounts of employees, let's say something like restaurants, I want to advertise in the restaurants industry. And I would want to sort by total employees so I can see uh, which zip codes have um, much more employees. And it looks like maybe 21 to 25 in a zip code might not be the best. But if we go back to the first page results, we can see that there are some zip codes that really stand out here. Uh, now, again, just like before, we can always go to this filters and expand or make the search distance a little bit smaller, but we can always, and let's go ahead and do that a little bit, maybe go 20 miles out. I'm a small business, so I don't wanna go too much further than that uh, as an embroidery business. Uh, and then I can go ahead and filter for the demographic characteristics, or again, the industry performance. We talked about total employees. Actually, that makes more, much more sense in this example. We can say we don't want more than maybe uh, 50,000 employees, uh, or actually, no, we do, or maybe at most 100,000 employees. Maybe that's a little bit aggressive for my small business. Um, but we do want to make sure that in a zip code, there is at least uh, 500 
uh, employees in the restaurant industry. So we go back to our results and we can see that it is filtered and sorted for our particular purposes there. And then we, we can explore those particular zip codes. Uh, Lasasha, I see that you have your, your hand raised. Yes, um, we had a comment and a question in the chat. Um, Pelham said, I believe that Pam is referring to imprinted promotional products or branded products as a business, a marketing tool for businesses. And um, I'm sure what you went over kind of addresses that, that it can be, you know, adjusted, right? Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, the example that we went through, the same techniques can apply, uh, but you as the industry expert can go ahead and go in there and put the, if we're doing the competition analysis, you, you can do the specific customers that apply to you or in the advertising, the, the type of businesses that you want to advertise to. So uh, with my limited knowledge in that space, uh, the techniques will still apply. However, they will be adjusted based on, on your knowledge uh, of your, your industry and your experience in the business. Perfect. Thank you. And then we had a question from Nisha, Naisha. It says, this reminds me of Tableau. Are we able to download the data sets in case we need them for a presentation or do we just view them live on the site? Uh, so um, the answer is kind of. So not necessarily like a CSV file. However, uh, each one of our analyses, you can click this PDF button. So based on all of the inputs that you put in and everything, that's what will be generated in the PDF report. So we had the previous PDF report from our benchmarking analyses. So that has the heat maps, the associated uh, information based on, so it looks like average salary in this case, uh, employees report, and it has a lot of uh, additional things you may have missed, like consideration, uh, how you size up, um, uh, considerations and then little charts and things like that. See, for the advertising here, it will give you the information based on those top search results that have come up for each of the zip codes based on your sorts and your, your filters. And at the top, it will go ahead and remind you of what, what was searched, you know, what industry we had, um, what the filters were. So in this case, it was 20 miles. And sometimes additionally, it gives a little bit more helpful information. So 20 miles from the centroid of, of Columbia, South Carolina, which I don't think I mentioned. Uh, so it's helpful that it's it's here as well. So to answer your question, you can click on the PDF button that appears in each of our analyses. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Were there any other questions? Feel free to use the raise your hand feature if you have a question and we'll select you. It looks like Pella Myers put in the chat, um, is there a sign up cost? So I think I saw Andrina on the call. Uh, this might be a hero moment for you if you want to, to answer that question. Okay, so uh, as far as the sign-up costs go, uh, there is no sign-up cost for you as a user. You simply go to this and, oh, I see Andrina's come off mute. I'll, I think that means you want to talk. Yes, I'm here. Um, there is no sign up cost. Um, the cost has been taken care of through the South Carolina Department of Commerce. So there isn't a sign up cost. All you have to do is, um, I think Armand, Armando, they can um, go ahead and sign in and just create their account, but no fees are attached to that. That is correct. And in fact, you can, uh, if you don't feel comfortable, um, if you don't feel comfortable making an account, you can always explore as a guest. That is that is also an option as well. Uh, however, if you do decide to make an account, there are other features coming that will be beneficial to you. So the reports and things like that, we're working on features to where you're able to save that. So you can have the, the history of your, 
your own searches. You'll be able to submit uh, business updates. So if you have uh, a business listed on, on size up, um, then you can, if you ever move, change numbers, add a social media, you can always go to the site, add a, or update a, a business, and it will appear on the tool for, for everybody to see and be able to, to compare as well. Um, some other things, um, I believe we're, we're working on some different pings to let you know when certain parts of the application have been updated with the newest uh, data. Um, and I'm sure, let's see, probably other webinars that we are attending that are, are, are attending, that we are doing as well. So uh, I encourage you to, to sign up for a, an account there. Um, going back to Andrina's uh, comment, you can, you can use the tool right now at sizeup.info slash SC, or you can go ahead and uh, scan this QR code and go directly to it. Uh, I do want to, before any other questions come in, I do want to do one more plug in for our open house where we're able to sit there one on one with you and answer any of your specific questions. Uh, so go ahead and scan that, bookmark that, or go ahead and write down the, the website here, sizeup.info slash open house. That is every other Wednesday, and I believe it is at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, I want to say. And sign up early. It is limited to the first 10 uh, registrants. We do want to make sure that we keep it intimate and we're able to get everybody's questions answered within that uh, one hour time slot. All right. Do we have any more questions for Armando in the chat? Or if you would like to come off mute, let us know if you have any questions. Yes, please, please ask your questions. Otherwise, you're going to give me uh, a sense, an inflated ego to say that I was able to explain everything uh, well enough. Um, so please ask your ask your questions. Um, and again, this is the reason why I know sometimes this happens. Um, you don't have any questions at the time, and then later you're either using the tool or you're like, oh, I should have asked him uh, this or that. So again, please go ahead and take down that link there. I did see a hand raise, um, but it went off, so I'm not quite sure. Last oh, chance. Maybe, oh. maybe we answered it while they were... <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Armando, for that in-depth presentation of the Size Up SC tool. It is one of the best kept secrets <laughs> for small <laughs> business owners. Um, we appreciate you for taking the time um, out of your day to go over this information with our audience. Um, and as far as it goes, we have Andrina from our South Carolina Department of Commerce on here. Thank you so much, Andrina, for joining us today as well. We appreciate you for all that you do and linking Osbo with this tool. So we appreciate you. Um, last but not least, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we do have some awesome events coming down the pipeline. So please make sure that um, you are linked and locked in with our office. We send emails out about events that are coming from us and our community partners. So if you are not connected with us, I will be dropping a link in the chat to a form that you can fill out to become a part of our contact list. Um, so just make sure that you get in touch with us, with us that way, as well as our phone, email, and website information. I will also be putting in the chat our upcoming event, as I mentioned earlier. Um, this event will be held on Thursday, August 22nd from 12 to 1.30 p.m. It will also be a virtual lunch and learn, and it will be surrounding intentional networking, how to build connections, and purposely purposefully and strategically um, 
That event will have a keynote speaker of Mr. Ronald Harvey, VP and Chief Operating Officer of Global Core Strategies and Consulting. Um, that will be on Zoom, just like today's event. And one of the cool things about that is that you guys will learn all about um, the purposeful, the purposeness of being intentional when you network, how to build, target, and identify relationships for business growth, navigate various network settings, use of social media to engage, enhance, enhance your networking, and also how to own the room. Uh, that registration link will be in the chat as well. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we are super excited for our sixth annual event, um, Engage Richland. And the theme for our event this year is Build, Grow, Scale. And that is going to be hosted by your Osbo office in connection, in collaboration with the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunity. And that event to mark your calendars will be Wednesday, September 18th. There will be more details to come. So we really invite you all to join us. We're going to have fun. There's going to be some awesome workshops incorporated with that. And I yield with that. I'm going to turn it over to our director, Ms. Pamela Green, and she's going to close us out. Thank you, Sasha. Once again, Armando, thank you for the information. What comes to mind for me is what you share today is priceless. And thank you to the Department of Commerce who covers the cost of this for you. So I encourage each of you to take advantage of um, what was shared and to take advantage of the tool. Um, one of the things that Armando hit on was 60% of businesses fell within the first five years. And when we take a look at part of that is dealing with lack of preparation. This tool helps you to prepare. It helps you to see where you rank uh, within your industry. And it's able to take it from state, city, county level so that you know where you are. Um, I think it's wonderful to be able to know who your competitors are at that level as well. And then, of course, the advertising piece of this. So I say to you, please take advantage of the open house hours. To me, this is customized attention for you. So by all means, take advantage of this. We want the Department of Commerce to continue to pay for this year after year, Andrina. <laughs> so uh, once again, thank you all for your time. Um, we will be sending a survey um, out to each of you. So anticipate that. We always want to know what's what's on your minds of things you want to see later on. We will give you back the rest of your afternoon. And thank you once again for, for being with us today. And thank you, Armando, for sharing all of this in the way that you were able to unroll, um, to, out, to roll this out to each of us to really understand the crucial pieces, the crucial pieces of size of SE. So thank you all for being here. And we look forward to seeing you at our next, next Lunch and Learn. It was my pleasure. I appreciate you for, for inviting me and having the opportunity to present. Right. I do see a hand raise. I don't know if that's. I'm sorry. I meant to say thank you. I For some reason, it's not letting me text. But thank you. It was very helpful. Awesome. You're welcome. <laughs>